Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Let's now go straight to the newspapers and see what major stories are making headlines across Nigeria today. We're kicking off with the Daily Independent. Uh, that's going to be on your screen in uh, just a few seconds. There you have it. It says uh, there, banks' constant recourse to SLF window, indicative of trouble. Analysts worried borrowing from SLF uh, jumped sevenfold lately say uh, illiquidity may impact banks' capacity to grow assets. Also, PDP reps threaten legal action against the federal government over Twitter ban. Serap urges Commonwealth to sanction Nigeria. Gunmen kill 20, burn a palace and petrol station in Ibado. Raise Imo Commissioner's house. Police kill five, arrest one in fresh attack on Imo uh, headquarters. Onion traders threaten to cut supply from south from today and hoodlums raised station police kills six suspected armed robbers in delta state we can also see on the daily independent nnpc malls 2.5 billion dollars afri exim bank loan uh, for stake in dangote refinery buhari jonathan akiri dulu say tb joshua will be missed by followers also security operatives invade ipob's uh, lawyer's country home kill one uh, I think those are the big ones that we can share on the uh, Daily Independent. Oh, well, local, local government polls, Lagos APC rules out refund for aggrieved aspirants. And CBN vows to sanction banks denying customers Forex. On the Nigerian Tribune, outrage as herdsmen kill 11 in Igaga. The writers on the Tribune says, We will defend our people, Amotekun, to begin joint patrol of Yoruba land. That's according to Southwest Governors. Ibarakwa North local government boss says the Fulani burnt the palace, fueling stations, several shops killed our people. Now, um, Makinde calls for calm, says police coming area in search of culprits. Lafi Afeniferi Ari Adams, others react. Also on the Nigerian Tribune above the headline, gunmen invade Delta community, bomb police station with IEDs. Six years and two trillion naira after electricity distribution stalls at 3,000 megawatts. Still on the Nigerian Tribune, shock, tears, greet TB Joshua's death, one week to 58th birthday. Buhari, Akira Dulu, Autumn, Monarchs, Mourn. Commissioner, local government boss, lose houses to arsonist strike in Imo. Onion marketers threaten to stop supply to south from today. Our children exhibiting normal behavior. Parents of Afaka students cry out. Our children exhibiting abnormal behavior. That's parents of Afaka students crying out. PDP blast APC over Twitter ban as Nigeria lost 4.4 billion naira in two days. MTN, Glow, Airtel, Etisalet taken to court. Serap asked Commonwealth to sanction Nigeria. Madam is directive, anachronistic in a democratic society. Also, Autumn says, Twitter ban, diversionary, ill-advised. All right, let's move to the Punch newspapers next. So what we can find uh, on the screens there, yes. It says, uh, Twitter ban, job losses loom, economic woes to worsen, NASG and experts uh, warn. With present economic woes, we shouldn't add to, people's, uh, to our people's problems, says the NASG. Ban will dampen foreign investors' interest in Nigerian businesses, say economic experts. And it will disrupt thousands of small businesses capable of creating 70% jobs, <laughs> SME owners are saying. Still on the punch, Igongong community fingers Wakil's family as 17 uh, killed and four station houses and palace burnt. Attack provocative, says uh, Akere Dulu. Makinde calls for calm. Alafi accuses police. Bandits, headsmen, and others kill 394 and, kill, and kidnap 224 in one month, says a report. Banks commence 6.98 Naira USSD charge. Customers kick. Also on the point just morning, we are increasing Forex to banks for SMEs, travelers, and tuition. And a lady who lodged with boyfriend in hotel, in Lagos Hotel, falls sick and dies. Okay. Els Exaki and wife's detention, Shiites fume, allege uh, 70, uh, 78 protesters were killed. 
and confusion trails a tiku on Soludo's campaign posters in Abuja. No block asylum for IPOB. Applications will follow procedure. And that's from the UK. Those are the big ones on the uh, Punch newspapers this morning. And lastly, on the Guardian newspaper, $12 billion e-commerce suffers as Twitter ban cost 7.5 billion naira in three days. So we're seeing uh, different figures. The Nigerian Tribune had said Nigeria lost 4.4 billion naira in two days. Okay, um, this one here says 7.5 billion in three days. And federal government in talks with China considers internet firewall to block VPN access. A4AI Nigeria says situation creates $1.2 billion loss for MSMEs, raises questions of our readiness for investors, says Alton. Also in the Guardian newspaper, deplorable facilities raise safety concerns at international airports. Senate probes Maritime Academy for alleged $1.0.5 billion misappropriation. Ten die in Kaduna Kano road accident. TB Joshua asked Nigerians to pray for 2023. Shocked worshippers relieves last moments before collapse. Buhari governors, church leaders mourn. Losing a loved one is never easy, wife mourns. NSA orders immediate dismantling of illegal security outfits nationwide. A friend of YCA, Arona Kankafu, others false federal government over Ibarakpa killings. Five suspects killed as mayhem continues in Imo. I think those are the stories we're looking at this morning. Uh, we can now say good morning to our guest, Mr. Tunde Kolaole. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, my sister. So there How lots... was your weekend? Fine, thank you. How was yours? Uh, it was okay. Fantastic. There are lots of stories in the, you know, in the papers this morning from the insecurity all over the country in you know, your state. You know, 11 killed in Igogo. Um, we're talking about 88 in Kebi, road accidents in Kano, Kaduna, different you know, stories as well as the big one about the billions and billions of dollars that have been lost you know, because of the shutdown of Twitter. Where would you like to start? Well, uh... Kindly permit me to start with the passage of um, Pastor T.B. Joshua. Okay. Here was a man who was preparing for his 58th birthday, uh, but uh, certainly uh, couldn't celebrate it. He had to pass on. What this tells us is that all of us, as human beings, we are mortal, and that none of us will have the capacity to determine where we will take our exit. T.B. Joshua is important in so many respects. He has been faithful with his God, he has been faithful to his calling, and he has also been a man who has um, been the center of um, a very uh, good tourism to Nigeria. He was also a good ambassador of this country in terms of uh, the different countries he has visited where he had gone to preach the gospel. And you and I will also know, uh, is Emmanuel TV is one of the most watched television stations, evangelical television stations uh, in the world. So when a country loses that kind of a person, it is a very, very huge asset that uh, the country has uh, lost. Uh, we take consolation in the fact that uh, it is not how long but our way, you and I do know that our Lord Jesus Christ didn't live for too long. Immediately he accomplished his mission. Uh, he transited into uh, uh, eternity. Ditto for our for Prophet Muhammad. May the light of God continue to shine perpetually on his soul. He also never lived long. He accomplished a mission that Allah assigned him and then uh, took his exit. May God forgive uh, whatever uh, transgressions Pastor Joshua may have made, and may his passage not lead to the crumble, to the fall of the synagogue church that he established. We hope and we would like to see that uh, church uh, continue to prosper. So my condolence to his family. I will now again want to go to the killings and insecurity all over the country, particularly the one that um, 
took place in Oyo State in the Gagan uh, community. Here is a community that has known no rest for quite a long time now. In spite of the establishment of, of Amateko, it would appear that uh, the insecurity around that axis has uh, continued uh, uh, unabated. What is uh, worrisome about this the more is the fact that uh, whereas the police the soldier, I mean the army, the DSS and all the other security forces are not are uh, very proactive, uh, very, very uh, ruthless uh, in the way and manner they have been dealing with the insecurity challenges in the southeast. They haven't shown the same dexterity in handling the, the, in handling the rural banditry that we are seeing in some of these communities where the elders and the farmers uh, uh, there is no love lost between the elders and the farmer. So this uh, doesn't uh, sound well. It's not a good reflection. It doesn't show that the government is using uh, the same measure in handling the different challenges that we do have in the country. And when the country is not showing, uh, is uh, seen or is perceived uh, to be partial, in the way Amana is handling this uh, insecurity challenge, the possibilities are that uh, it will worsen the situation. So we enjoy the security people to wake up and uh, squally tackle these different issues of uh, insecurity all over the country, wherever they may rear of their ugly air. Um, furthermore, uh, one would like to look at. Uh, the depth uh, portfolio of the country. On the front page today, the country is said to have lost about 745 billion, uh, I think, Naira, which they banned on uh, Twitter. It's also said that um, NMPC is considering borrowing about 2.5 billion, I think, dollars from Africzim uh, Bank. Uh, when you add this to all the bonnies and I mean the, the absence and the killing that is uh, going on all over the country and all that, you want to conclude that the country is uh, the hemorrhaging uh, very, very uh, badly. Uh, the government requires to look inwards to generate more revenue and not continue to pile up this debt that is piling up. Uh, Debts are supposed to be cured for only investment purposes, especially investment that is likely to be able to repay the money that is borrowed. But in our own situation, we are borrowing money mostly to pay salaries, mostly to kind of um, uh, sustain uh, the politicians in power. We are borrowing money uh, mostly to... Uh, 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 provide infrastructure that does not have the capacity to repay the money that is uh, borrowed. A country that engages in that kind of a thing is not showing prudence, it's not uh, demonstrating wisdom. And it will appear that the country doesn't understand the elementary principles of uh, money uh, uh, borrowing. And so the government requires to sit up with regards to these huge sums of money that it has continued to borrow from all over. Well, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Kola, Kola Wale, quickly react yes, to the, the PDP and their statements with regards to the ban on Twitter in Nigeria. Uh, they have the, they're the ones who have claimed that we've lost 4.4 billion uh, Naira uh, since yeah. Friday. Um, of course, the government is still adamant with its ban on, uh, on the social media site. Uh, quickly react to that. Uh, honestly speaking, I feel depressed uh, with the way and manner the, this government and uh, these politicians have been handling the issues of the social media. Why do I feel depressed? If you, are, if you are private to some of the information that some of us are private to, you will recollect that before this government came into power, it used the social media like no other government has ever used it in the history of this country, especially against the government of Dr. Goodlock Jonathan. They were on Twitter, they were on Facebook, they were on all the social media. Blackmailing, embarrassing, 
insulting and uh, heaping all sorts of uh, uh, terrible things on the government of the day at that period in time. Terrible, terrible hate speeches and all that. In fact, they bought a huge number of um, uh, laptops, gave to some people, and put them on salaries and all that. So these free net speeches against uh, the government of the PDP and that of God of Good Lord Jonathan. So why is it the same government that is now complaining about the misuse of social media? I think that is uh, very, very improper. And uh, more importantly, the ban on Twitter demonstrates uh, a lot of, in, uh, um, uh, why would I put it? A lot of uh, lack of understanding as she gathers the social media operates around the world today. It's a media that is very, very difficult to ban. Because I give you an example. If I have a phone number and my Twitter account is hooked on my, on my, on my phone uh, number, there is no way you can ban me from having access to, to Twitter. That is uh, one. Secondly, look at the huge amount of money that is being lost to the country on a daily basis. Most of the young people today in this country and around the world depend on these social media for their businesses in terms of reaching their uh, potential customer, in terms of marketing their products and other, in terms of also the new technology that they are incubating. So if the government were to be a government that is not analog, that is knowledgeable in the way and manner social media operates and all that, it will never have ventured whatsoever in banning Twitter or any social media for that matter. They call for the registration of the social media will also not work. The social media is a democratizing media. It is a media that uh, is hooked or that can be accessed from anywhere in the world. Uh, all the countries of the world that have tried to ban social media have never succeeded totally in banning it. Yes, they may hamper the operation of the social media, but to ban it totally has proven to be very, very impossible. Second, I mean, thirdly, the actions that Twitter has taken against President Muhammadu Buhari should not have been equated with an action against Nigerian nation or against the Nigerian people. President Buhari, for God's sake, is one individual who was using Twitter to also uh, market his government or to sell his government to Nigerian people and to the rest of the world. If the media or the know of those, the, that media think that they have done something wrong or violated their rule and they have taken action against them, he ought not to have uh, translated that as an action against the Nigerian people or as an action against Nigeria's uh, foundation. For God's sake, President Mohamed Buhari is not an emperor. Uh, the era of uh, Napoleon Bonaparte is gone forever. Nobody, no president, no prime, prime minister should appropriate to himself the sovereignty of an entire nation, such as President Mohamed has done. Secondly, or even fourthly, I think, uh, the ban of social media is a violation of the constitutional rights of Nigerian people to have an unfettered access to information. It's a constitutional right that no individual, that no government can take away uh, from them. So I foresee that the young people and most Nigerians will most likely challenge this ban of Twitter uh, in the different courts of law or in a competent uh, court, I mean, co a, any court that have a, a competent jurisdiction, especially the federal High Court, to make sure that this ban does not uh, stay, right. to make sure that this ban is unturned and the government is sanctioned for it right. uh, appropriately. Well, thank you very much uh, to Nicola Wale. We have to wrap up here. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, Mr. And for Kalawale. starting up uh, the week. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, sadly, of course, uh, the courts are not in session, so I'm not sure if there's going to be any uh, uh, lawsuits against the federal government going soon. Short break. When we come back, uh, what happened on this day on the 7th of June many years ago? I'm going back to the year 2014 uh, to share with you the death of a Nigerian icon. I'm going to the year 1929 to give you a bit of a history class regarding Italy and Vatican City.